Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be going over the power rule with you. So up until now, we've been finding the derivative of x using limits, where the limit as h approaches 0 is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So the question stands, why do we do such tedious work with that method? While the equation is quite reliable, there's something called the power rule, which cuts up a lot of time needed to find the derivative. So this is how the power rule works. Basically, you're finding the derivative of x to the n, which is equal to n times x to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so let me break this up. So you have x to the n, and what you're going to do is you're going to bring n to the front, so you would multiply n by x, and then after you do that, you just subtract n by 1. So the outcome is n times x to the power of n minus 1. Now the only exception here is that n cannot equal 0. Okay, so now we're going to try some examples. So for this example, we're going to be finding the derivative of 8x to the power of 10. So what you're going to do for the power rule is you're going to bring 10 to the front. So you're going to multiply 8 with 10. And then you're going to subtract 1 from the exponent, so 10 minus 1. And this is going to give you 8 times 10 times x to the power of 10 minus 1. And this is going to give you 80x to the power of 9. So for our second example, we're going to be finding the derivative of x to the power of negative 3. And that's pretty spooky. We have a negative exponent. Well, luckily, the power rule also applies to negative exponents, so we're just going to do it the same way. We're going to put negative 3 to the front, and we're going to subtract 1 from negative 3. And this is going to equal to negative 3 times x to the power of negative 3 minus 1. And that is going to give you negative 3x to the power of of negative 4. And what you could do is you could leave it like this, or just to be safe, because you know, I don't know how Mr. Tan's gonna mark it, you're gonna do negative 3 over x to the power of 4, which basically just gets rid of the negative exponent. So that would be your answer right there. For our third example, we're going to be finding the derivative of 8 over 7 times the cube root of x to the power of 4. And for a question like this, it would be great to rewrite this because it's easier to read and it's easier to solve. So this would be equal to 8 over 7 times x to the power of 4 over 3. So we're given this example 8 over 7 times x to the power of 4 over 3. And using the power rule, we're going to be multiplying 4 over 3 by 8 over 7. And we're going to be subtracting that with 3 over 3, or 1. And when we calculate it, we're going to be given... I actually have no idea what we're going to be given, so I'm just going to use my calculator to solve this. This is a Casio calculator. It's a great calculator. I would highly recommend it to anyone. It's silver. 
It's way better than sharp calculators. It was around $20. I got it at Staples, but you can get it at Walmart or Superstore. And it has a lot of really great functions that you can use for calculus. However, we're not going to be using any of those functions today, unfortunately. But nonetheless, great calculator. I would recommend it to anyone. 10 out of 10. Great investment. And I was definitely not sponsored by Casio to say all of this. So I'm just going to put in 8 over 7 times 4 over 3. And that's going to give us 32 over 21. So I'm going to write that down. 32 over 21 times x to the 1 over 3. And when we simplify this, we're going to get 32 cube root x all over 21. And that's going to be your answer for this question. So thank you for watching this lesson. And I'll see you all next time. Bye!